My name is Jeffrey Davis. Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. And uh, we are always dedicated to sharing the success or helping the success of entrepreneurship. Uh, we can be found on any of your mobile devices. Uh, last time uh, we had a discussion with our litigation reporter, Mark Furman from the firm of Tarlow, Breed, Hart & Rogers on the somewhat of the history of the Demulas case. And this time we're going to be talking a little bit more, I think, about the employees and the labor side of what's going on, although we'll find out. But uh, in part two of the Demulas story, uh, welcome back, Mark Furman. Hello, Jeffrey. Great to be with you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark, uh, where are we in, our, uh, in your analysis of the Demoulis case? Well, we've got this incredible, um, you know, employee joint action, non-unionized employees, no legal rights, all tenants at will. They've effectively shut down a multi-billion dollar company out of their commitment and loyalty to the deposed CEO, Arthur T. Demoulis. Arthur T. was uh, booted out uh, back in uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, the employees literally took to the streets, picketed the stores, have made it so that uh, business as usual is impossible. The company has lost um, millions and millions of dollars. In the meantime, Arthur T. is trying to buy out uh, his, uh, his fellow owners. He controls 49.5%, uh, but he also controls uh, the goodwill of the company, it right. seems like. The goodwill being the workforce and the, the work productive element of the business day to day. That are responsible for for the reputation of Market Basket in the community. They have a great uh, reputation for providing uh, 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 food for uh, at reasonable cost at a lower price point. Uh, the reputation is for generous pay and benefits to employees, which may explain the employee's commitment to him. Um, and. Uh, the, the folks in, in who are controlling the company have indicated that they're interested in selling the company. The company uh, is valued several billion dollars, and uh, the employees have literally uh, uh, crippled the company and, and to try to support bringing back RDT seems to be the chance. Well, I want to add one thing because you added the uh, the uh, economic element that Arthur T. has built into the business, which is a differentiator from his competition. But the other thing which people always underestimate is that people all over the press have said, he knew me by my first name. And I always talk to employers about about being, about loving your staff, about feel, about your staff feeling cared for, and getting to know your staff, the old concept of management by walking around. And Arthur T. found a way in this multi-billion dollar business to be connected emotionally to his army. And when you've got the hearts and not just the wallets of your army, you have your army. And yeah. he does. Yes. I mean, look at the, these are folks who need paychecks to support themselves. I'm sure they're and, all, most of them are in debt. That's and, the American way. And they're risking their financial well-being to try to secure the return of a very wealthy person. These workers are basically saying that even if they're right or wrong, what I like what they're doing is they're saying our values are more important than our paychecks. And we want to protect our values. And their values are that this man was our leader, uh, like him or not, and, he, and that's who we fight for. We want our leader back. We just don't work for anybody. We're not working for a brand. We were working for a person, not for a brand. Right, right. Um, I mean, the commitment is just incredible. I, I noticed uh, not long ago the governor uh, suggesting that the employees go back to work. That's uh, stepping into the fray. Uh, yeah. That, that was surprising to me to hear that. Um, well, he's, I mean, he's probably scared where this is going. He's looking after the public interest. He does not want the store sold to an out-of-state company. 
He doesn't want the store destroyed. He doesn't want pe- these people unemployed. He's thinking like he wants to keep them employed. Right. So he's probably looking at it from a public service point of view. And it's a dangerous game that the employees are playing because they have no legal rights. It's not like with a union where you have all these this extensive body of protections for uh, uh, for unions under the National Labor Relations Act. These people are employees at will. Well, again, if, let's say the business was sold to a Hannaford Brothers because they've talked about it. Uh, if you're sitting in the management of Hannaford Brothers and you're looking to rec- and you bought the stores, are you going to hire 2,000 people who've just tried to blackmail in their minds ownership? No, you're going to want to put your people in. So these people could be out of jobs. That's They're right. They're really putting their careers at stake. And there aren't a lot of grocery billion dollar distributors looking for t- distribution companies looking for 2,000 workers. Right. They don't grow <laughs> on trees. That's right. <laughs> It's uh, a dangerous game they're playing. They, it is. And um, so hopefully it's going to end soon with a positive uh, uh, result where uh, uh, Arthur T. buys the company. There's, uh, instead of having this contentious partnership arrangement, it'll be sort of all on one side of the family.